What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Protego and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out the newest camera from Zcam, the E2C. Now this is a micro four thirds camera and they've recently announced a super 35 and a full frame 6K camera, which I'm super excited to test out. But in today's video, we're gonna be looking at this guy right here, going through a bunch of different tests, really pushing this camera to see how it works in different environments, looking at some dynamic range, as well as some low light performance, doing what I like to call a candlelight test. So we're using a single candle to light a scene and seeing how that looks with this camera and then also doing some exposure recoveries to see how well these codecs and how this thing holds up in post-production. Now starting off with the camera, we're shooting in H.265, which is the highest bit codec you can do on the Zcam E2C. And for the resolution, we're gonna be shooting in UHD and UHD low noise to see really how well that low noise format helps the high ISO performance of this camera. So let's get right into it, checking out the candlelight test. So starting off, we're gonna shoot in the cinematic 4K or the DCI 4K, H.264, Z-Log2 with a grade on top of that, bringing it back to like a 709, 800 ISO, 140th of a second at an F2.8. You can see we're getting a pretty clean image here. You do see a little bit of noise, but it's really not too bad. Now going over to the low noise version of exactly what we just did, so same camera settings, it's definitely a lot cleaner, but you lose a little bit of the dynamic range. Those blacks are a little more crushed, but it is an overall smoother image. Now going ahead and jumping to a side-by-side -side of the two, on the left side you have the low noise, on the right side is the original shot that we looked at, and you can see that there's definitely a little bit more noise in the regular shot. Now as we lift up the exposure that becomes a little bit more apparent and we grab this still frame here. On the shot on the right you can definitely see that noise pattern and a little bit of that vertical banding along with some of the magenta and greens where you have a very strong green shift on the low noise version but it is a lot smoother. So that green shift is going to be a lot easier to get rid of than that sort of digital grain pattern that you're seeing on the right image. So as you can see with this, you definitely get a cleaner image with that low noise setup. But now let's jump into the high ISO performance test. So going through all of the ISO range from 800 all the way up to 25,600. So throughout all of these tests, I am gonna be using the UHD low noise profile for the 4K resolution. I think that's gonna give it the best chance to have a cleaner image at the higher ISOs, which is ultimately what we're going for with this ISO performance test. We're also gonna be going through every single third stop of ISO, so there's gonna be a lot of them. I'm gonna try and cut through them pretty quick so you can stop if you wanna check out a specific ISO. We're also going from a Z-Log2 image, as you can see on the right side, which is the flat profile, and then we're going to a graded 709 image. Also in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that we have a 300% crop in. You can see what the ISO and noise is looking like in a more zoomed in area. Going up to 2500 ISO, we're still having a very clean image and there hasn't really been any sort of color shift or noticeable noise increase in any of this footage yet. Going up to 3200 ISO, up to 4000 ISO. With this one, you're starting to see a little bit of softening up of the image. You're not getting those super sharp details that you can see in the white lines underneath the chip chart. Going up to 5000 ISO, Pretty similar results. You're starting to see a little bit of a color shift in the shadow areas towards the greens, but again, not too much noise. It looks very organic. Going up to 6400 ISO, again, very similar results, adding in a little bit more noise and a little bit more softening up of the image overall. Up to 8000 ISO, this is probably where the top end limit is going to start to happen. You're starting to see a little bit more noise as well as some color noise, so those magenta and greens. And then going up to 10,000 ISO, this is starting to get pretty noisy. You could add a little bit of noise reduction on top of this, and you might be able to clean it up a little bit, but you're going to get some really softening up of the image. 12,800, adding in a lot more noise, especially in the shadow areas. You're losing a lot of detail as well. Up to 16,000 ISO, adding into that even more, starting to see a little bit of horizontal banding with the noise pattern and a lot more color noise and softening up of the image. 20,000 ISO, kind of almost going back in the opposite direction now, doing a little bit more of a magenta shift in the shadows instead of green. And then lastly, up to 25,600, even more into that magenta, a lot more color noise in there, and a kind of softening up and dulling of the image overall. 
Again, shooting in that low noise format, it really helps out the high ISO performance with this camera, being able to push it close to that 8,000 range and still have a really usable image. Once you start getting into the 10,000, 12,000, 16,000, it starts to get pretty noisy and it's gonna be a little bit harder to clean that up, but up to 8,000 I would say is totally usable. Now let's jump into the exposure recovery over and under exposing this image four stops and seeing how much we can get back in our post-production. So starting with our correct exposure, we have our skin tones around 65 to 70 IRE, and that's what I'm considering correct exposure for this camera and for this shot. Our ISO is at 800, as you can see, and we're gonna start by overexposing the image. So on the left side, you can see that we have that plus one stop over exposure. So it's one stop over our correct exposure. And then we have our recovered shot. So what we've been able to bring back from that overexposed image. And with this one stop over, we're able to bring pretty much all of that information back in all of the highlight areas. Going up to the next one at two stops overexposed, it's getting a little bit brighter, especially in the mug on the shelf and the brighter areas of my face. But again, we're able to bring all of that information back and not lose any detail in those brighter areas. Going to three stops overexposed, again, very similar results. It's very, very overexposed. The board is now exposed. My face is almost completely blown out. My neck's blown out. That little painter's wheel behind me over my left shoulder. And we're able to bring all of that detail back, which is really impressive, especially for not having a raw image. Going to four stops overexposed, this is where we're gonna to start to lose a little bit of detail. You can see we've lost a little bit in the bright side on my cheek, as well as that wheel in the background. You're not able to see any of the detail of the ridges of that plate, and the mug on the shelf is starting to be washed out. Now going back to our correct exposure, and we're gonna go in the opposite direction now, so underexposing the image, doing the exact same thing. So on the left side here, you can see our one stop underexposed. And then on the right side, you can see our one stop recovered from the darker areas. Now with this one, we're able to bring it back, but you already start to see a little bit of a color shift towards the green in the darker shadow areas. And we're getting a little bit of an off color. Going to two stops, again, we can bring that back. We're starting to see a little bit of softening up of the image. And I think that's partially due to shooting in that low noise profile. Going to three stops underexposed, this is getting pretty dark on our actual shot, and we're able to bring most of it back, but with some heavy color shift. Now you can probably get rid of a lot of this in post, and you can really clean that up a little bit, but this is probably as far as you'd wanna push it. Going to four stops underexposed, an extreme green shift, a lot of digital noise now, that low noise isn't really helping clean it up, and it's softening up the image quite a bit, and we're losing a lot of detail. So as you can see with this footage, you definitely want to overexpose your image rather than underexpose. As soon as you start underexposing, you get a little bit of a green shift to the image, especially using that low noise. It really softens the whole thing up. And then with the overexposed areas, you can really push it to about three stops. Once you get over that, you're going to start losing some of those brighter areas, even though you can bring it back and it's totally usable if you needed to. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about the Zcam E2C, I have another video coming out soon that's going to be covering all of the features, the ports, buttons, menu setup, all of that kind of stuff and I'll throw a link to that in the description down below once it's done but if you guys have any questions before that video comes out about the test that I ran or this camera in general make sure to let me know in the comments down below if you want to get your hands on this camera there's also gonna be some links so you can try one out for yourself and if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more just like it make sure to hit that like button subscribe for new videos every single week and I'll see you in the next one